38 years in uniform. I helped negotiate the peace agreement in Bosnia with Richard Holbrook, and I was the NATO commander, and I think I know a war crime when I see it. And I think there should be an immediate action taken by the International Criminal Court to investigate what happened at Ashraf. Above and beyond everything else, this has the appearance of a war crime. And it needs to be dealt with properly and legally, just like every other government is responsible. So should the Iraqi government be held accountable. These were Iraqi soldiers. So every time I see this tape, I, I feel very strongly about this. Mr. Vidal Cadre said that this is a race against time, but it's also a fight against tyranny. And I think that as much as the humanitarian concerns right now are the overriding issue, I think one cannot set aside the strategic imperatives that are present here also. The history is well known. In 2003, when the United States forces came in, we knew what the MEK was. We made relations with them. We promised them protection. If they disarmed, they disarmed. They received protected status under the United States and under UN authority when the United States. But I've seen no evidence that this is a terrorist organization. I've asked for this. None has been presented. I can see no reason why they should remain on the foreign terrorist organization list. None. I call again on the, on the investigation, not only by the United States and, and international authorities, but by the International Criminal Court to look at, the, at what happened at Camp Ashraf. It brings me then to the strategic issue. It's well known that the Iranian government has a long, long reach. Iranian dissidents have been assassinated periodically over the years worldwide. The Ira actions of the Iranian government in the Middle East, outside the borders of Iraq, of Iran, are well known. And it should be a real issue for people to ask, how can a group of 4,000 women and 2,000 men who are disarmed in a camp inside Iraq attract such focus from the Iranian government that they would put so much pressure on worldwide to attack this group. I was in a conference in, in Los Angeles three weeks ago, and an unofficial representative of the Iranian government, at least that's what he's reported to be, came up to me and told me uh, and warned me about this group. It's a worldwide campaign against this group. Now, you have to ask yourself as a strategist, why would this be? How can this group be so powerful? If nobody in Iraq believes in them, nobody supports them, then why wouldn't the Iranian government just ignore them? Why make so? It must not be true. This group could be the key to opening the third way of dealing with the crisis in Iran that is surely coming, preserving these people and recognizing the extraordinary influence that they have, obviously, is not only a humanitarian imperative, it is a strategic imperative. Thank you.